Hi, I'm Warren Sprouse here on the Bible Forum. This is Sunday. It is May 27th, 2018. Uh, we are working our way toward <laughs> the end of the age. It just seems to be coming faster and faster all the time. I'm glad you're here with us. Uh, we've got a lot of stuff that we're going to be uh, uh, dealing with tonight. A lot of different topics. We do this every Sunday evening. We look at life from a biblical perspective. We're looking at the news, things that are coming at us every day. I had someone email me this week in response to uh, the email that I sent out uh, talking about the topics we're going to discuss, saying that, do you ever run out? And, you, you know, along that lines. No, there's there's no end to the thing. In fact, I added two more uh, today. Just as the news would break and things would come out, it was things were in line with what we we're talking about and I think interesting. And as I've said to you for the last almost 20 years, we're here to solve all the world's problems in two hours or less. So we love having you here live. You can watch where you are, wherever that is. We're running YouTube, uh, we're running Facebook Live. Uh, we're running the, the website, thebibleforum.net, uh, live. And then during the week, these are all set up in segments that you can then pick and choose what you'd like to watch. Uh, on the Facebook, there's uh, the whole show. If you want to sit and watch two hours, uh, see all the stuff in between, you can do that. Uh, so we, we have your attention throughout the week, and I like that. The Bible Forum is a faith ministry. It's a ministry of alternatives, biblical counseling, and education. Uh, we exist based primarily on the uh, largesse, the, the love, the, the gifts that our listeners, our viewers send in, and we appreciate each and every one of them. You get a tax-deductible, charitable receipt. We are a nonprofit corporation. Uh, so if you have a mind, we have PayPal, we have other things, <laughs> we, we can work it out. We had a, a week in turmoil. Uh, the whole world just seemed to be roiling, broiling around in, in the, the cauldron this week. Somewhere at the top of the list are the NFL owners. NFL owners and the league... Uh, and there are the league, uh, voted unanimously this week to institute a new league rule. And the new league rule bars players and team personnel from kneeling or sitting during the national anthem. Uh, a new report suggests that their decision was made out of fear of our president that he would somehow step in and he would make them do even worse. Uh, one team official said, our league is terrified of Trump. We're scared of him. What does the NFL fear? It largely fears boycotts. It fears people not wanting its product on television, not watching it, not participating, not buying all the stuff. It fears the public. A publication called Bleacher Report indicated that several sources repeated that the president is the core basis for this decision. And of course, right behind it, we saw this week in public stores, I think it was in Florida, it could have been in Texas, I've forgotten now exactly where it was, but a public store gave in. Uh, to some demonstrations. The activist David Hogg, he is uh, from uh, Parkland, Florida, the shootings down there. Uh, he scheduled a die-in, people laying on the floor pretending to be dead inside public stores this past Fridays. And Publix could have called the police to clear the store, stop this silliness, uh, that would have been my first thought as a manager of the store. Uh, get these people out of here. They're breaking the law. They're creating a, sturbant, a disturbance. It's a tripping hazard. And they're interfering 
with commerce, not to mention the possibility of a fight or something else where customers could be hurt. But no, not, not, not publics. They let these people do it. And then they issued a statement. The official statement is at Publix. We respect the students and members of the community who have chosen to express their voices on these issues. We regret that our cont contributions have led to a divide in our community. We did not intend to put our associates and our customers they serve in the middle of a political debate. At the same time, we remain committed to maintaining a welcoming shopping environment for our customers. We would never knowingly disappoint our customers or the communities we serve. And so as a result, we have decided to suspend corporate funded political contributions as we reevaluate our giving processes. Can you say NRA? <laughs> I like Publix. You like Publix? I even thought about applying for a job at Publix when I retired. That was one of my first things. I want to be a bag boy at Publix. They do that. They hire old people. And you get to carry the bags out for the ladies and put them in the thing and, you know, uh, stuff. And it's a good people kind of ministry you can have. And I am deeply disappointed. And today, the reviews around this subject are all in, and America apparently doesn't like public's response either. Uh, they are claiming they will stop doing business there. We're in a no-win situation, people. Stand up. Be counted. In, in less important news, we have Iran. U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo said the Trump administration is preparing to apply unprecedented financial pressure on the Iranian regime. He says the sting of sanctions will only grow more painful if the regime does not change course from the unacceptable and unproductive path that it has chosen for itself and for the people of Iran. If they restart, he said, their nuclear program, they will have a big problem on their hands, bigger problems than they have ever had before. A treaty would be our preferred way to go. And should Iran fully comply with President Trump's demands, Pompeo said all the sanctions about to be imposed would be lifted. And the United States would be, quote, prepared to support the modernization and reintegration of Iran's economy into the international system. Pompeo urged Iran to look into the mirror and come to its senses. And then there's North Korea. The talks are on. And then they were off. And now maybe they're on again. What's happening? Well, the Oriental mind is testing this president in terms of his character, his commitment, and his courage. They always have. North Korea is among the poorest nations in the world. Her people are literally starving, while her leadership lives in luxury. However, indications are this is becoming very quickly critical. It may be why North Korea wants talks in the first place. Uh, they destroyed their rocket facilities because the mountain in which it was being contained was unsafe. One more shot, it would have all claved in and probably released all sorts of unsafe and destructive things. But they made a feint toward public opinion and the West and said, oh, we're going to do away with it. Then they refused to show up for a pre-talk, a talk in Singapore. They made noise like they were unhappy with us, and they didn't want to talk. We had people in Singapore for three days waiting for them. They never showed up. And then they acted as though they were shocked when our president backed out. Can you say inscrutable? <laughs> 
The inscrutable oriental, difficult to fathom, difficult to understand, impenetrable. But this Korean president's father did the same thing as did his grandfather. It's in the genes. A little further south, over in the east, over in Turkey, we've got a former Turkish leader by the name of Mustafa Kemal. Uh, says that Ataturk, uh, that's a title, not the person's name, but that's the old leader that established the country that we now know as Turkey. Uh, he considers himself some sort of a descendant, emotional or political, to this Mustafa Kemal Ataturk, who is the father of modern Turkey. Now, he's not the only guy that's ever used this title. Uh, it was Kemal who abolished the caliphate back in the day and he separated religion from the state. He also turned his back on the Arab world, which he saw as a burden, hampering that country, his country's progress toward parity with the developing West. Now, President Erdogan sees himself bringing back that Ottoman Empire, and he's attempting to play the West against the East in order to use the first to minimize the latter all the while being a member of NATO, although that may not last much longer. As such, Turkey has ordered 116 F-35 fighter jets, and recently they have ordered two S-400 air defense batteries from Russia. Neither of these systems are compatible with NATO technology. In the midst of all this, Turkey is now threatening the U.S., warning that when Turkish troops complete their takeover of Afrin, a city in northern Syria, their next target will be Kurdish-held territory near a place called Man Manbij. That's, we have um, troops there. America has troops there. Uh, they're training the Kurds. Uh, the Kurdish units that make up the backbone of the Syrian democratic forces. And then a little further south in Israel, we've got U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, accusing the liberal media of glorifying Hamas terrorists in its coverage of last week's U.S. embassy move and concurrent Gaza riots in order to denigrate U.S. President Donald Trump, and appeared to accuse the press of having blood on its hands for allowing Hamas to garner front-page real estate. The apparent success of the embassy's opening ceremony enraged the liberal media all over the world. Could this be yet another diplomatic triumph for President Trump? Well, Friedman wrote the prospect of this kind of thing is just unbearable. Speaking to the New York Times, Friedman on Saturday was quoted as saying, evangelical Christians are more passionate supporters of Israel than many Jews. Friedman, Jews. The Jewish world was not happy with that. But sadly, it's probably true. And finally, here at home, Roseanne Barr asked her Twitter friends what they thought about President Obama's new gig. You've heard about his new gig. I think I mentioned it last week. It's going to be on Netflix, him and his wife. And the responses to this were priceless. Uh, they weren't complimentary. <laughs> And current President Trump has told government workers they will need to spend at least 75% of their work days well, working. You do know about federal government employees, right? On Friday, Trump issued three executive orders aimed at getting rid of low-performing federal employees. The changes could save you, the taxpayer, an estimated $100 million every year. 
The new rules promote basing employment on merit rather than tenure. Nowhere else in the world is, is we do stuff on tenure alone. Additionally, federal agencies are encouraged to fire employees instead of suspending them. Our federal government's not big on firing anybody. And have less time to improve their performance. Get up to speed or look for work. A White House announcement said tenured, said tenured federal employees have stolen agency property, run personal businesses from work, have been arrested for using drugs during lunch breaks, and none of them have been fired. In a statement accompanying the release, Trump said the government must, quote, operate more efficiently and more securely, end of quote. Having criminals operating in your government isn't secure. Having them selling drugs is not secure. <laughs> this is not good. Under the new orders, federal workers will be expected to devote at least 75% of their time on direct job duties. 75%! It's outrageous! I know. Bureaucracy. It's not capitalism. We'll be back. We've got some more stuff to talk about. I want to give you a, a religious roundup for the week when we come back. Stay with me.